This is the first in a series of videos that I'm going to be doing for a piece of software called Magic PC, and it actually also involves a console. My aim with this series of uh, tutorials that I'm going to do is to try to help a lot of community theater people get away from their fear of um, using consoles that may be different from what they've used in the past. With that in mind, I have some pictures here of some old lighting control. So this is going way back, but don't laugh. I used to work at a middle school that had a system like this up until about 2007. It wasn't quite this large, maybe about one third of what this is, but it, it did have a system like this and always felt like a little bit of a mad scientist when I was backstage uh, working with this lighting control. Then I worked at a community theater for a while that used a lighting control board that looks something like this. And a lot of people are probably familiar with this. This is very popular. You've seen a lot of colleges and universities and schools. Um, but, you know, we still have a lot of faders. We just kind of use remote control with a lot of faders instead of having the actual dimmer packs that we're actually moving. And we eventually upgraded to something like this at the community theater, but still using a lot of faders over in the side. Some of you probably even seen consoles that looked like this. It was very common. A lot of different manufacturers, so a lot of the lighting consoles looked the same. But now we've moved on to consoles that are a lot more compact and look a little bit more like this. And I know it's a little bit frightening for a lot of you people in community theater because, like, where are all my faders that I need to have to run things? So, so I'm going to try to convince you that you really don't have to have all those faders. I just threw up a couple of different examples here of different companies that, and, you know, current lighting consoles that are being put out there. And they actually just have like 10 faders. And some of the consoles actually have no faders at all, but they might have on-screen faders if you really desire them. So if you're using a touch screen or you're using a mouse, you can access the on-screen faders if you need to do that. And there's really not a need for the faders, but if you really do have a need for faders, you can, you can have them on there. So... Now, the company that I'm going to be talking about here is Champsys Magic Cube. This is a compact version of their uh, lighting board that they have called the MQ50. And this is the example of like an MQ80, which is like an older lighting board. But you notice that we do have kind of faders, but in this case, they're really not called faders. They're called playbacks. The nice thing that Champsys has done is they've created a piece of software that totally mimics this lighting board and you can actually use the software for free and it will output to I think it's maybe a one universe of lighting or possibly two if you're using a third party um, USB DMX I think if you're using um, ArtNet you can get up to four universes output the whole idea they have is if they can get you used to using the software then there's a chance that they may be able to get you to uh, invest in an actual console. So the software actually looks exactly like this particular model that they make. So it totally, totally mimics that. Now again, there are a lot of things that can be selected on here, but in my tutorial series, you can avoid like touching a lot of these buttons and that, and hopefully I can convince you by looking at the tutorial series that you can actually use this in your community theater. And um, reasons being that, number one, you may be thinking of upgrading to a console. This way you get a chance to try it out and get used to the software. And their consoles are similar to a lot of other consoles in the market as far as price-wise and, and feature-wise what they can do. But this way you kind of get to try it out and actually use it. And as I said, you can at least put out two universes, possibly uh, four universes without any problem with this, just using this free version of the software. Now, there are some restrictions when you're using the free version of the software, um, but a lot of these probably wouldn't bother you at all. And like using uh, remote control by iOS and uh, accessing the uh, console via the web and auto starting playbacks, full screen mode for some people that like it works like a kiosk, uh, triggering a playback by, by sending DMX information. You still have mouse control using the encoders on the interface. Um, you can't do time code. You can't send uh, MIDI notes out and it won't receive MIDI notes in. So a lot of these things that it's listing here anyway would be 
high-end features that you probably really don't want or need in community theater anyway. There is a way of uh, making this accept a go command to progress from queue to queue. So if that's all you need, um, then we can actually do that. And I'll show you that in one of the tutorials. So really these limits, you know, unless you're doing a high-end production, these limits really wouldn't make a difference. Now with the software too, they give you some choices that you can kind of do a slow upgrade. They do a Magic Q wing that looks something like this that gives you the encoders on it and the playbacks and some of the buttons. And that uh, opens up some of those features that would not be accessible. And they even have like a mini wing. So you have to just take a look at the features, what it uh, opens up and what it unlocks. But again, I think that you'll find the software by itself can do a lot of what you need it to do. Other reasons for using the software is, you know, if we're instructing young people on how to use a lighting control software, uh, we probably want to instruct them on something that's going to be up to date. So this is definitely a, a more up to date console. It's more like what you're going to see out in the market today because it's getting harder and harder to find lighting consoles, a lot of faders. If you want the faders, you can buy fader banks at an expense and, and tag them along, but you really don't need them if you're using touch screens and that. So, so from an educational standpoint, it's a, it's a good idea because you're actually training them to use something that they can actually see out there, maybe in college and that. Even if it's not this particular console, a lot of the other consoles that are out there are very similar in the way that they operate. It's just a matter of a couple of um, differences between what button does what and uh, how you type in certain directions. So, all right. Hopefully I didn't scare you away. And uh, I'll, as I said, we'll have a number of short tutorials that you can watch here. And I hope they can convince you to take a look at this software and maybe try it out in your community theater.